Welcome to our episode on mastering concurrency in Go with Mutexes and Confinement. Today we'll dive into the world of Go routines, mutexes and confinement and learn how to handle shared resources safely and efficiently. Imagine a concert with limited tickets and hundreds of eager fans trying to buy them simultaneously. Without proper management, this can lead to overbooking or ticket duplication. Similarly, in programming, accessing shared resources without synchronization can lead to race conditions and unpredictable results. Let's look at our ticket booking system that we are going to code in Go. Here we will implement multiple Go routines that represent users and try to purchase tickets. We will use the shared variable tickets and access it by each Go routine without synchronization. Let's say we have 500 tickets available and about 2,000 users are trying to buy the tickets. We will use Go routines to simulate a lot of users trying to purchase the tickets at a time. Let's begin. We need a wait group to block our code to allow a set of goroutines to complete execution. In this loop, we will create goroutines for each user. Let's increment the wait group counter by 1 using add method. Now we create a goroutine. Suppose there is a function by ticket. This function will require the wait group. User ID. and the reference to the shared variable ticket. We pass this by reference as we will have to decrease the ticket count when a ticket is sold. Now we will implement the function buy ticket. This function takes three arguments, the address to the wait group, the ID of the user who is trying to purchase the ticket and the address to the remaining tickets count. We first check if there is any ticket left. If tickets are remaining, we simulate the ticket purchase by decrementing the ticket count. Next, let's add a print here. And if there is no ticket left, we add another print. At the end of the goroutine, we would like to signal the wait group that we are done here. Let's do this at the beginning of the function with defer. In the main function, we will wait for all goroutines to finish with the wait function. Let's run the program.
Whenever a ticket got sold, we have put this print. This print will always have this text in it. We pipe it with a grep to get only these prints. Now let's pipe this to count how many tickets got sold. What? How did we sell 508 tickets? We had only 500 tickets. Let's run this command 10 times. We can see there is inconsistency in the numbers. Our shared resource tickets variable is not protected and is used simultaneously by many Goroutines. Let's fix this using a mutex. In the Goroutine, we have been using this shared variable without protection. We will solve this with a mutex. Let's create a mutex here. Now, in the Goroutine, where the shared variable is used, we will protect that part of the code by locking the mutex. Let's run the program. Now this works properly. It sells exactly 500 tickets. Another powerful technique to solve such problems is confinement. It restricts access to the shared resource, ensuring it's only accessible in a controlled area of your program. Let's see how we can restrict access to the tickets variable using confinement. This is the tickets variable. This channel is used to send ticket purchase requests and this one to signal the stop. This function will be used as a go routine. This manages the allocation of tickets. This function simulates user requests trying to buy the ticket. Let's start with the main function. We start the go routine manage tickets. This function needs the ticket channel as it looks for a new user request on this channel. We will create an infinite loop here. Next, look for a new user request in the ticket channel. We will need the tickets variable to manage tickets. Let's add it as a new argument. If tickets are available, allocate a ticket by reducing the count. And add a print as we did before. If tickets are not available, add another print. Let's fix the function call here in the main function. Now we will loop over all users. Suppose 2,000 users are trying to buy the ticket simultaneously. Increment the weight group count. Now create a new goroutine here with the function buy ticket.
This function needs the ticket channel to send requests to the manage ticket, goroutine, so add it as an argument. Let's send the request to the channel. Oh, we will need the user ID as well. Now send the user ID to the channel. We will signal the wait group once the go routine is over. We need another argument, wait group here. Now, call the done function on the wait group. Let's fix the function call in the main function. In the end, let's wait for all goroutines to get over by calling the wait function on the wait group. Well, there could be a scenario when fewer users are trying to buy the ticket. In such a case, we need to signal the Manage Ticket Go routine that we are done with the requests. We will use the Done channel to do so. In the end, we send True to the Done channel. Let's handle this in the Manage Ticket function. In the infinite loop, we will have a select statement to handle both cases of receiving a ticket request and a done signal. This is our first case. The second case is, if done, is triggered. Add a print with the remaining tickets here. We need to fix the function call. Now run the program. And looks like it is working. Let's run it 10 times and see how many tickets are being sold. Perfect. It sells exactly 500 tickets. Now, consider a scenario where fewer users are trying to buy the tickets. Suppose there are 200 users only. Now run the program. It sells 200 tickets exactly. Let's look at the output of the program. And here it says 300 tickets are left. Perfect. Today, we explored how to handle concurrency in Go using mutexes and confinement. We learned that proper synchronization is crucial for ensuring consistent access to shared resources. Whether you prefer the direct control of mutexes or the structured approach of confinement, Go provides the tools you need to manage concurrency with confidence. Thank you for watching. Happy coding!